When we change the height of the light source, we get different shadow pattern on the face. Let's have a look at what happens if you raise the light too high. Now several problem areas appear. Dark eyes, a shadow under the nose, a dark neck and a strongly lighted nose. You probably want to ask, what a fool would set the light like that? However, just reduce the contrast by adding a fill light and the problem areas are not so obvious. For example, look at this portrait outdoors on a sunny midday. Indoors there are also similar situations, but sometimes it is just enough to move your model a few steps back so that the lamp does not shine from the top, but slightly from the front. And if soft light is used, especially with a fill light, then even an experienced photographer can get confused. But, since we have identified main problem areas in advance, it is already easier for us to find very high lighting even in a difficult situation. If we temporarily increase the contrast, then we will see better that soft shadows or fill light does not save the portrait from the negative effects of very high lighting. One can clearly see it by the bright nose and dark eyes. Let's have a look on several examples of such lighting in the practice shooting with an external flash indoors. If the photographer directs the flash right on the face, he will get flat light. It is possible to work with such a light, but it's difficult. Another way is to direct the flash up, reflecting the light from the ceiling. The shadows become softer and it is difficult to recognize extremely high lighting. Some photographers see the problem of dark eyes and use a white card, which slightly illuminates the eyes. But there are no miracles. It is impossible to illuminate only the eyes without changing the general lighting. And in this case, direct light and the light reflected from the ceiling are mixed. This mix does not make the best impression on the viewer. But the fourth method, to our surprise, is rarely used by photographers. It is enough to direct the flash to the same ceiling, however, no slightly up, but slightly back. Thus, we do not mask the problem, but get rid of it. In order to better see the difference, let's again increase contrast for all four variants. Another classic example – shooting in cloudy weather. It is always necessary to think from which side the main part of the light will come. For example, here the light falls from above and makes the shadows that we discussed at the beginning of the video. Note that we see shadows not only from the nose and eyebrows, but also from small wrinkles, pores and scars. There is a simple but effective way to cope with the overhead light, to hide from it. Use a tree, arc or any other similar object. If there are no such object nearby and it is necessary to shoot right here and right now, then you have to build the roof by yourself. For this we use the black flag. The light in this example is very soft, therefore we will again increase the contrast of the photos to analyze the light and shade on the face. But be careful, it is not enough just to hide from the highlight. You should always think what's next, what will now light the face. It may happen that we get rid of the extremely high light, but at the same time receive even more terrible beast lighting from below. Let's talk about it in more detail. A face lit from below looks very strange for the viewer, let's analyze why. Most sources of the light shine from above, which means that the brain is more accustomed to thinking that all the convexes drop shadows down. A typical example is the footprint in the sand. Shadows fall from top and we immediately understand that the footprint is pressed into the sand. If we flip the picture, the shadows will be dropped upwards. The brain is confused and the right footprint on the image is convex to us, especially if you reduce the picture or look on it from far away. What will happen with human face? Let's check it out. We took the usual mask, which is convex on one side and concave on the other. A concave mask illuminates by high light looks like a convex mask illuminated by a low light and vice versa. We did not strive to reach exact similarity, but the effect is already clearly visible. Indeed, the face lit from below seems to be turned inside out. That's why it looks so weird. Now let's look on details and see various defects that lower lighting creates on the face. Shadows under the eyes, Einstein moustache, dark nose, 
and dark forehead. Again, we reduced the contrast by the fill light, so it became more difficult to see all these defects. Some retoucher photographers try to hide these defects in Photoshop, but quite often it looks bad. Low light is cunning, so you need to be very careful while shooting. Low light makes all these problems visible almost immediately, as soon as the light source began to fall below the face of the person. It is not easy to notice, especially if we are dealing with a large light source, such as a softbox. In this case, the direction of the light is measured from the center of the softbox. Some photographers believe that if the softbox is tilted down, the light on the person falls from above. This is not true. The lighting is still lower. Only by raising the softbox above, we got rid of the trouble of the lower light. We combined all three examples into one image, so that it is easier for you to analyze them. Sometimes there are unpleasant surprises, there are no noticeable at first. It seems that the light is correct and then the model tilts the head. It is better when your model tilts the head towards the light and not from the light, otherwise you risk getting a lower lighting. Another example, when a model is lying on the bed or on the ground and the photographer stops thinking about the light, although the choose of the light direction will be very important here. But the most insidious kin of the low light is a reflector. Many photographers believe that if the sun is shining from above, then this light should be reflected from below. Of course, holding the reflector from below is much easier than raising your hands up. Who wants to work hard during the shooting? But we must not be lazy, always try to direct the light with open eyes. Partial lighting of shadow areas also hides some problems. It is easy to notice the difference between the lower lighting and the top lighting. Look at the ear, it looks unusual, as if it turned inside out. Some photographers are very afraid of any shadows, so they are trying to do everything to get rid of them. And again, the first thing that comes to their mind is to direct the light from the side opposite to the main light source. The face becomes flat, a second chin appears, the shadows look strange. Also, additional glare is seen in the eyes, a reflection of the low light source. A face with such low a glare in the eyes looks tearful. This happens because tears usually give its own glare, which is also located at the bottom of the eye. By the way, glare in the eye is another indicator that we can use when creating a light scheme. For example, we will not see glare at all if we use too high lighting. Returning to the low light, we note that it should not be avoided all the time. For example, a person working in front of a laptop should be lit from below. Also in the case of people sitting around the fire, because it makes sense. But if you want to confuse and surprise the viewer, use the low light for creative purposes. Thanks to this unusual light, the face looks mystical or even frightening. Lower light is also interesting if we want to play with the shadows that a person throws on the background. In this case, the lower light gives you more opportunities for creativity than the top light, although it all depends on your imagination. And by the way, look how lower light can spoil your selfie or a video conference. Subscribe to our channel, we have a lot of useful information about portrait lighting that we want to tell you.